Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. Today is an interesting chat. Um, Elfie and I had ran across this a while ago, but this is for those of you that are brave enough to join the circle and summon an ancient Loa with us today. Um, so there was a girl, um, I think this was a couple of years ago, um, not too long ago, and she uh, was supposedly in a pagan group on Facebook and she was into like summoning, you know, different entities, gods, goddesses, and uh, she supposedly uh, summoned this Haitian slash voodoo hoodoo god um, named Papa Legba. Um, if I'm, I'm mispronouncing it, I'm sorry. I mean, tomato, tomato. But, um, and then a couple days later, she was found dead. But it was all like really mysterious circumstances. So we kind of wanted to chat about this, like, was it really like a paranormal instance or was it just like the media running with some sort of ghost story like they're used to doing? Um, so we're going to chat about that. Elfie's with me today. Um, side note, thank you guys for all of your um, <laughs> kind messages on Instagram regarding my uh, my torn ligament. Um, so yeah, I, I thought I'd come on here and ch I chatted about it on Instagram, but I know not everybody follows me on Instagram. So I was supposed to have this outpatient uh, surgical procedure done um, last week on a Wednesday. And I went in to my doctor and it was basically a follow-up. And then uh, I'm going to do a YouTube video about it. I don't want to go into, into like super deets here, but... Um, I went into my doctor. I haven't seen him, my surgeon for like three or four months because he wanted it, my last procedure to heal and then go in. So I, I thought I was having complications and I was like, um, you know, he had to do like an MRI and a CAT scan or I'm sorry, just an MRI and a ultrasound is what we did. And he wanted to see how it was healing and if we needed to do, to do any more procedures on that leg. And um, he's like, well, you know, the good news is like the leg, you're, it, it's healed, like you're, you're good to go. And I was like, but why am I in pain still? And it's like predominantly like my ankle and my foot. <laughs> and so I'm laughing because I'm like hysterically embarrassed at this point, honestly. <laughs> so um, he's looking at my scans and he's like, so the reason that your foot hurts is that at some point you tore a ligament in two places on your foot. Um, and then he like did something and like you could hear it pop and I was like, oh, he's like, did you hear that? That's the, that's the, that's the, like the, the ripped ligament. I was like, oh, well that's great. Um, so he was like, did you fall? Like, did you do something? I'm like, yeah, probably. Like I fall often. Like he's like, do you remember when you fell? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I mean, I fall a lot. I don't know. And, um, so anyway, I, uh, I have a temporary brace on right now. My, my <laughs> air cast is coming this week. I'm laughing because it's just, it's not a good time for Crystal to be in a cast, if you know what I'm saying. So anyway, I'm fine. Thank you for everybody that's been messaging me. I haven't been able to reply to, to all the DMs. I'm also really embarrassed to be replying to the DMs because it's just like, I didn't know, I didn't know my ligament was out. You know what I'm saying, Elfie? Like, um, I had no idea. <laughs> How are you, Elfie? How was your week? Doing good and everything. Sorry to hear that, though. It kind of disturbs me when the doctor's like, do you hear that pop? Yeah. That's the ligament. Like, oh, that's he did, what that is. Well, he did it twice, and he was like, because it's, oh. it's, like, broken here, and it's, like, torn here, you know? And um, he was like, I, I have to push on it to make sure that's what it is. Like, because, you know, he's a good dog. He's not even supposed to be doing that because he's a vein doctor. It's, like, completely separate. Oh. Um, but he was, he was like, yeah, it's definitely, uh, how have you been walking around for, like, five months on a torn <laughs> ligament? I'm like, I don't know, honestly, you know, I don't know. It's the trauma. So, yeah. Sometimes you're like, oh, yeah, that was hurting. I just didn't think of it. <laughs> well, again, I got my I got my one cast on today, or, you know, it's the temporary one. And honestly, my foot, it, I have no pain. It's like, wow, that was the problem, <laughs> you know? Oh, so this is what it feels like not to hurt. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm so, you know what it is? It's like I work too much. I work 24-7. 
and like I just I ignore pain like I'm so bad my mom has a, a really high pain tolerance I'm scared to death I'm gonna be like her like when she had her heart attack she walked around for like four or five days and didn't even know she'd had a heart attack Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's the Native American culture for you. Like, we're just warriors. We're fine. Like, we've been shot. We're fine. Everything's fine. So, anyway, I'm good. You know? It's just, it's really embarrassing to just be like, I had I had an issue and didn't know it. But that's fine, you know? No worse than this girl with Papa Legba over here. It, oh, uh, yeah. This was a weird one. I mean, I... I have thoughts, and it's mostly it's not even about the girl, it's more just like how it's reported and everything. Her name, Kat, right? Is, is, her name mm -hmm. is Kat Rustin, is, is her name, Kate, Caitlin or Kat, is what they called her for short. Um, yeah. That, so I saw this article, when did this officially happen? It says it was around May of 2020 ish, somewhere in there. Yeah, so this act happened like pretty early on in the, in the pandemic and everything. Point That's point. a rough way to go during a pandemic, you know? Well, that's the other reason why I'm look, looking at this kind of side eye when it's like we were at the start of pandemic, this happens like, okay, I'll hear you. Elfie's <laughs> <laughs> okay. suspicious, okay? Yeah. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> no. Um, so, well, okay, first of all, let's start with hoodoo and voodoo. I feel like there's uh, misconceptions with hoodoo and voodoo. I don't want to go into like a deep explanation because you could really roll with both of those. <laughs> There's I, a lot. There is a lot. Well, it's the same with witchcraft, pagan. It, like, there's a lot. You can take it in a lot of different directions. But, you know, one thing I'm going to say is I feel like, and I'm sure you're going to agree with me, is the media portrays hoodoo and voodoo as being, like, all dark and all, like, blood sacrifices and, like, uh, you know, bringing zombies back from the dead, right? We hear about that in Haiti and Haitian mm -hmm. voodoo or hoodoo, whichever direction they're using. It's, and, in, and this is just my two cents, I'm going to let Elfie have a rant too. Um, I, it's like paganism and witchcraft. There's good and bad in everything, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it's, I, there's an egg spell that Kat and I do that's, um, it's, it's hoodoo, I believe. It's hoodoo. And it's where you, can, you cleanse yourself of negative energy or if anyone's, like, done spells on you or, like, black magic or, you know, sent, ma sent magic your way that's bad. You, you attach it to the egg and you put it in water and you flush it down the toilet. Like, Kat and I have done that spell for years, literally. Um, you have to do, like, three or four eggs at a time. So that, that's not a bad hoodoo thing. But some people would consider it bad because you're looking at the egg as, like, an embryo and you're attaching the negative energy to the embryo. So I guess it's also on viewpoint i don't know but once again same same with paganism and, and witchcraft it's not all bloodletting and blood sacrifices do you want to rant no, on it do you agree or yeah no i agree because like and honestly if you look at it, the uh the media has had a good like since almost the beginning of cinema itself we've we've seen really bad portrayals of voodoo and hoodoo and and just like I said with zombies and serpent in the rainbow and just that it is this um, primitive bloodletting, just aggressive. <laughs> aggressive, yeah, it's a good term for it. And it's like, actually, if you look at it, it's like a lot of it deals with lots of healing and taking care of community and community workings and connecting with the spirit and ancestors. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is the bridging between the living and the dead. And worshipping the gods and goddesses or the Loa, whichever however you want to term it. Yeah, the, the Loa who are the spirits of who are kind of the psychopomps and in between because there's like they believe there is one supreme being, but it is like I guess too large of an encompass to actually connect with directly. So you have the Loa who are the in between psychopomps that connect to very small pieces of that supreme being depending on what you need worked on or communicate with mm -hmm. and with the loa thing so when i started getting into loa um i play world of warcraft i'm like i'm a gamer chick um mm -hmm. i love world of warcraft I've, I've been nerding out on that game for literally like 10 years or something um and in the last expansion yeah. Oh yeah, I'm like I love World of Warcraft. Like I'm really bad about it. I love my characters. I'm I'm really good at it. But um, in the last expansion, they had pulled in Loa, which are different. There's like there's a Loa of death, and they have so. It's it's interesting to me once again. Like yeah, you have the media portraying the bad side of hoodoo voodoo. Yet, 
in mult in culture and media that we're all like how many there's millions of people that play world of warcraft literally there's even mm-hmm. celebrities like the rock plays it uh, ronda rousey plays it like so many celebrities play it too but like you have these people that are playing it and they don't even realize that the expansion was based on hoodoo voodoo loa mm-hmm. like you're so scared of it yet you're playing a game that is like surrounding this culture like they almost did an odd to the culture of that they appreciated it so much that they brought it in with so the, so it's so confusing what the media does because it's like you have the one side where they just make it seem all bad and then the other side yeah. where they're incorporating it in video games and people don't even realize it which is fine but in other words it's not bad well they they oversimplify <clears throat> it they they talk about because there is in this culture there is such things as as hexing and unhexing and there are curses and such and that's there are different levels and, and whatnot of practices and like you said with both voodoo and hoodoo and these practices there's so many layers and so many different branches because there's not just one type of it i mean we i mean we have there's the Hadian, haitian voodoo but then there's new orleans voodoo mm-hmm. and so both of them have very similarities there's also great differences between them so it's not like a kind of dry like what's voodoo and like just one answer will cover everything well it's like it's and over time of course it's going to grow its own different like branches like much like Mm -hmm. paganism witchcraft has and the original voodoo came from africa right when like yeah when when slaves were brought over Mm -hmm. yeah so who knows what the ancestors are actually practicing there on on the grounds because they're probably still practicing their current their old and current practices but um, I feel bad for people that that practice hoodoo and voodoo because I feel like that's been demonized worse than witchcraft, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. And it's one of those things that's like, because I've seen, there's quite a few documentaries you'll see on History Channel and uh, various shows where they try to talk to current practitioners and um some of them will talk and some of them won't and it's one of those i don't blame them for not wanting to talk to the media mm-hmm. I mean, it's totally understandable that you see the exam the examples of how they're spun and portrayed and even if they they're trying really hard to present the truth of it they know the editing will be changed up i mean luckily it has gone better with some of the like many mock many documentaries and stuff but there's still a lot of mystery behind it. And it's just because a lot of them just don't want to openly talk about it probably because they're like, well, you're going to take it however you are and spin it. So why should I bother talking to you? I agree. I agree. Even Ghost Adventures has had a couple of episodes down in Louisiana. I, can't, I think it was Myrtle's mm-hmm. Plantation. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, it was a plantation and they had, I think it was a young boy on and he was like, yes, you know, like I practice voodoo and then someone else practices voodoo. And it was like this, <gasps> the whole crew was like, <gasps> you practice voodoo. And it's like, Ugh. you know, there's bad voodoo, there's bad witchcraft, there's dark, there's dark practices on everything with magic. And the thing is, it is honestly, there is a religion is, and it's like, it's no different than someone going to church or to temple. I mean... It is them going... Oh, God, don't get cat started on that, Elfie. <laughs> don't get cat, okay? <laughs> if you get her rolling on this, because remember, she was brought up extremely Catholic, and her family is still in the church, like, you know, and she loves yeah. her family and respects her family. She still goes... Uh, well, she sings at church on Sundays, but, you know, like, <laughs> that's her way of getting in is a different way. But, you know, she's like, you drink blood out of like wine out of a cup to represent jesus's blood that's a sacrifice you guys like you know and people it's so crazy how one religion is so on a pedestal where millions of people worship it at church yet there's another side of it where it's like haitian you know voodoo or even witchcraft and it's like oh my god you you do blood rituals but but wait a second you drink from wine from a cup that represents jesus so i th- I feel like it's like the same thing <laughs> like that's when cat will start rolling like yeah, i would i'd spiritual practices these are definitely spiritual practices and the thing is i think is there are times you will come across people who do the darker stuff who practices things that that not everyone agrees with and someone will see that and say and think across the board oh all of them do that then it's, mm-hmm. it's everyone it's like no everyone has their own practice they have their own lineages they have their own teachers 
it is it is not just one and done. Mm-hmm. Well, and uh, you know, even referencing back to Catholicism of mm-hmm. good and bad, which is in every it's it's a, of society. That's who we are. There's good and bad of everything, and that's even like oh, the yeah. priests that we've talked about that have gotten in trouble for you know the little boys. And mm-hmm. so there is no perfect. There is dark and light with all sides, and all sides have to sort of be not embraced on the Catholic side. That's bad. Like those people need to go to jail. But I mean, understanding that not everything is like we're gonna like slit someone's throat and die. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's what Hollywood portrays it, don't you? Oh yeah, all of Hollywood, and they just they they saw this as a way of like, oh, we can freak people out really easily. Mm-hmm. How do you do it? Well, we'll just have these drums and sacrificing chickens. And <laughs> Why am I and... laughing? It was, it's so dramatic, though. Who really yeah, is gonna so do that? Where do you get the chicken, first of all? And it's like. You, you know that most of the time there were there are chickens like there are chickens and roosters sometimes you'll see for divination stuff or sacrifices but as far as i know the chicken is then eaten afterwards okay okay right and i'm not saying and i don't i don't partake in offerings but Mm -hmm. you're right there are some cultures that do that i will never do that i would rather keep the chicken as a pet let me check let me have the chicken and take it back to vegas okay can i give you a few hundred dollars in exchange for this chicken okay there, no you have but, the rooster george and the jo- and george part <laughs> like who, who's the, who's rooster is oh that's just george he gets involved in the in ritual it's okay elfie <laughs> no, no, okay hang on a second <laughs> this you're giving me a flashback to us filming the pilot okay <laughs> oh, no. did i tell you about this woman did Wait, Kat, Kat didn't tell you about this? Oh, should I even talk about this on the stream right now? <laughs> okay, I'm going to. I'm going to tangent for okay. a sec because you're going to die when you hear this, okay? So, okay. oh my god, Kat's already, like, on it. She's like the poor chicken. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. So we, we show up. To, obviously, I, I put the pilot, you know, on, on uh, YouTube, and it was mm-hmm. Chloride, Arizona is where we went. And... Uh, we were in chloride and i was going to interview this uh woman we uh, essentially we stayed at this really haunted uh like bed and breakfast now it's a bed and breakfast but it was like uh, the original inn for chloride so it's literally like three or four hundred years old okay oh, cat just okay. said the alien lady yes okay um oh. the woman was the alien i told you i couldn't even interview her for the pilot because she was so it was rough mm-hmm. you know what i mean it was just really rough yeah. And so anyway, uh, the second to last day, we're filming because we're on set for like three or four days. Um, she comes over to us and she's like, <clears throat> yeah, the, the coyotes, you know, they, they get my chickens from time to time. <laughs> and we're like, God, that's what? horrible. Like, why don't you like put up a fence or something? Or, you know, like put a, yeah. I don't know. And she's don't, like, don't she's like, I can't, like, I gotta let them, like, run free, and I'm like, yeah, well, then your chickens are gonna get eaten, man, like, you know what I mean, like, so then she goes, well, I had, I think she named it George, she's like, I had this rooster, and this rooster was named George, and we were like, okay, where is this woman going with this, and because, <laughs> I swear to God, this happened, ask Kat, I swear, Kat, okay. confirm in the comments, I'm not lying, I, I did not know of a rooster named George until now. Okay. I don't, and she's like, and but once again, so out of out of the out of nowhere, she's like, I have this rooster named George, and he was really obnoxious, but he made a delicious soup, and I had to sacrifice him. What? And Kat and I were like, you know what? We have a few more hours left of filming. It's really time to go. Like it's time to go. Look at the time. Ugh. But how do you call something a pet and then you turn around, you know what I mean, and eat it? I don't, anyway. Oh, I mean, you don't, so, like Gordon Ramsay said, don't, don't name, don't name the, don't name the farm life. <laughs> we were like, oh, we need to go. <laughs> this is bad. We need to get out of here. But yeah, no, so, I mean, I get it. You're right. Like, I don't agree with, but there are cultures still to this day. There was, like, an episode of 90 Day Fiance I was watching because I'm freaking obsessed with that dysfunctional show. <laughs> And it's one of my favorite shows. And I was watching the show, and uh, they were, I think it was Ethiopia is where they were living, which is probably Haitian hoodoo voodoo, who knows? Or not Haitian, I'm sorry, hoodoo voodoo, who knows? And um, they, she, she married this guy, had his baby in Ethiopia, and they went home in Ethiopia. And outside of the house when she arrived, his family pulled up with a goat 
and right in front of her and the new baby, she's American, they just sacrificed the goat right there. <clears throat> and she was like oh. screaming and bawling her eyes out. So, and, well, and she... Give a warning on that. <laughs> Given a warning. <laughs> I know. I, I understand probably why they did it. Like the, the oh, reasons, but oh god. Um, I, I feel like someone's like, don't tell her. Just just do it. Well, oh she, his family. He was the only one that spoke English. I think out of the whole family, and she was crying her eyes out. She didn't. Her baby saw it. Like you know, like, you know. I'm, I'm sure the baby won't remember, but. Um, she was like, oh my god, why did your family do that? And he's like, it's celebration. Celebration of life. We give yeah. the goat's life back to God because he gave us this, our child's life. And she's like, you didn't have to kill the goat. Like, she was really upset. Oh, so, no. But once again, so I'm just giving examples yeah. of, like, you know, you're right. I it's a cultural thing. And no, we wouldn't do that here. But it is something practiced in all, all other cultures across the world. And there's nothing we can do about it. I, I think it's it's partially that. I think it's partially, like, I, at least in rural America and everything, we are so far apart from our food these days that, like, I don't think, unless you live in the countryside or live on a farm, I think not many people really think much about the, the process of your food going from the farm mm -hmm. to the table and everything so it's like we're very disconnected from that too mm -hmm. that's why I'm pretty much vegetarian <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't I, li I do it's true like I, that's why I went I was vegan for a long time but it's it's hard for me I still do incorporate chicken but I do I, I empath the shit out of animals and that's why I can't and kids and kids I'm terrible like I, I'm just it's so bad I could just, I would have a farm if I could already. You know what I mean? I mean, the pilot, we tried to say, we tried to rescue a chihuahua. I saw that too. That was just. <laughs> Kid, it's like, like, oh, uh, I was like, no. Leave me alone. <laughs> I told Kat, I was like, we're going to be filming a series and we're going to be out on the road and I'm going to come home with 20 dogs just from freaking <laughs> filming across America, you know? I, I, oh my God, that'd be so cute because I'm like oh her babies oh god her I'll have to f find like rescues anywhere okay so let's let's just get back on track okay. because obviously we're <laughs> we're way off in left field but it's fine I love doing that you know what I mean okay you did research on this so what's your like what do you you spurred out what you you started looking into this with research yeah and it's it's one of those like okay so with Papa Legba it's one of those like unfortunately he apparently gets mixed up between like when people show visual top like by like uh, everyone i think we mentioned it the american horror story right. and everything uh, we haven't talked about that but you can yeah do it that was another inspiration for the stream i love all the characters on american horror story although oh, i yeah. can't get in i can't watch all of them because some of them are so gory like the way they film that is way too damn realistic amazing like the whole production crew is amazing but yeah, this oh, is that was another part of this stream. It's just that's so I love when they bring these characters to life. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they put so much detail. Yeah, the gory part, especially like it's just sometimes very sudden. Like, oh, that just happened. Okay. <laughs> She's <laughs> Elfie. <laughs> yeah, there oh, was there was one like I got all I got through Coven. Like Coven was kind of was pretty. You know, there was some gory stuff, but I could get through that one. Coven was probably my favorite one. Obviously, the witches stuff. You know, but. Um, Bates, or was it the Bates Hotel one, or was it the hotel one with Lady Gaga? Ooh, yeah, that was rough. That was... That was I, one of my favorites, though. Was that, it really? One, oh, yeah. I I think it was mostly just because I loved uh, how Lady Gaga was as uh, the Countess. Yes. Like, I'll watch it all And time. her character didn't really bother me. It was, it was some other things that happened <laughs> so i was like whoa whoa i need a break i can't go back to it because but it is it's filmed beautifully that in uh, uh freak show was freak show actually was to me more disturbing i did watch full i watched all of freak show i did watch that yeah, that one was like okay. the clown was oh. i'm not a clown person i'm not really <laughs> scared of them though when i like it's not like that kind of fear even though you have it mm -hmm. literally sitting behind you on a shelf but um yeah. <laughs> you're like smiling, yeah. Come on, anyway. <laughs> um but like yeah, I, I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a clown person, I'm not a doll person. Mm -hmm. But it's not like nightmare style, it's just like ugh. It honestly for me the 
the the creepy part with Freak Show was more just the treatment of humans, like the, just mm-hmm. the treatment of these people just trying to live their life and everything. And it was just it was very emotionally roller coaster for me. Like this, it was a lot, and that didn't. And that they were based off real people that were in this, like, sideshow. And it was really just, I mean, real. if we just tear it down, it's people with disabilities that are basically, people are making money off of them. Oh, yeah. It's just really disturbing. sick. But yeah, it's disturbing. It. So bad. Um, right. So Papa Legba, he, he is a Loa, which I love. He mm. kind of reminds me in World of Warcraft as, um, oh, my God, what is the Loa that's in there? That's the... the um, He's the Loa of Death. Uh, Bonsomni is my favorite oh, Loa. Bonsomni. Yeah, oh my god, it's just my favorite Loa. But he has kind well, of that. He seemed, the, the two of them sometimes seem to get mixed up in culture because I think it's the, both of them deal with the crossroads. And yes, so they do. People flip the two sometimes. We should do another Loa because this is just fascinating to me. Yeah, Baron but, Somni, actually, there's so much on oh, that Loa. Oh, that Loa? That's Loa. favorite. Like, hands down. He's the Loa of death, right, Bum Somni? Okay. Yeah, he's... Yeah. Uh, Papa well, Legba. He's, he's of uh, cemeteries and such, but with... Uh, uh, oh, you man. you should play World of Warcraft, then, if you like Bum Somni, because, like, he is, like, predominantly in World of Warcraft. Like, he is, like, literally, like, living at the gravesite, overseeing the souls coming. It is the coolest shit. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, my God, it's amazing. I'm sorry. I have to, I have to take a look at that. I need to get back in the Oh my god, get into gaming, let's do it. Cat plays wild too. <laughs> um, so, okay, so Papa Legba, he's actually, he's the one you encounter when you first, like, if you're doing any work with any of the Arloa, he's the first person that you're dealing with because he's the guardian of the gates and everything. So a lot of times you'll sometimes even see in cultures where they'll, if they're going to a cemetery or if they're about to open up a ritual circle, uh, they'll knock three times either at the gate or on the ground and they'll call for Papa Legba to open up the doorway because until he opens up the doorway to allow communication there's no connecting with the rest of the Loa. So, so essentially like, he gives you permission? Is that how you would word it? Uh, he, permission, he's almost kind of like like he, the bouncer, like he's the guy at the gate going like uh, who allows that connection to occur. Okay. So he's so almost you, like a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Liaison, I guess, of the other side. Yeah. Okay. So he, and most of the time when you see him, he's an older looking gentleman. He has a straw hat. He has a cane. He walks with a slight limp and everything. He's very um, father figure-like. He, hmm. He's actually really, like, pleasant Loa from what it sounds like. He's one that you can connect with who helps you with the in-between because he is one of those psychopomps that works in between life and death and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it says um, that he can speak all languages, so that's interesting, mm-hmm. which I would expect you to. Now, I now, read the same thing, that he wasn't combative is a good word for it. He's just like, he's either going to allow it to happen or not, probably depending on the person's skill and like belief system and culture. I'm just going to say right off the bat, when we're going to be wrapping this over, uh, we're not going to jump ahead yet, but wrapping this back to the story of this girl, this isn't the kind of, I mean, I know he's a Loa, but even comparing it to God and goddesses, he's not the kind I would be afraid that would kill somebody. Yeah, he's, he's not, he doesn't really, like, there is a trickster nature to him, but it's not a malevolent trickster nature from what I've at least been able to to uh, cover now, since a lot of the voodoo at times does have uh, Catholic imagery and Catholic saint connection, he's often connected with Saint Peter, who's the uh, the the saint of the gates of heaven, who holds the keys of heaven, uh, but also Saint Lazarus and Saint Anthony as well. Hmm. Interesting. Now, when he's when they say he's accompanied by dogs, do you think that's like a hellhound image or just regular like the dogs of like guarding the gates essentially? I think it's partially guardians of gates. Uh, the dogs image might also be similar to uh, Karen eaters and such, since mm. dogs are often seen around cemeteries and whatnot. So that might be his connection too. Okay. Similar to like Anubis, 
with the jackals at the mm. cemeteries or even Hecate who is accompanied by dogs as well. Right, right. That makes sense. It makes sense. So we're it's it's a, just another version of these stories, which is like how we how all religions and beliefs are. Mm-hmm. There's all these different entities, energies that people worship in different ways. Like that's what I want to make a, a point of. Really, when you strip these religions down, they're not really different from one of the other. They're just like the core belief systems are similar. They've just been kind of spun in different directions. And that's where I think the fear needs to be sort of removed from. So a lot of people say he's seen as like a father figure. Um, mm-hmm. Now, the the trickster is like he's supposed to be a jokester type of thing or he like makes you solve puzzles or riddles or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's like he, he has a humor about him because it's one of those... He's there to help, but it's not like he's going to hand you the answer. He's going to... It sounds like almost like he's going to make you work for it. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be a simple thing. Hmm. But he's not there to be like... Because there are, like, tricksters and jokes, and there's malicious ones and slightly less malicious, but he does not sound like the, the malicious kind necessarily. So now, like any Loa or god or goddess, in order to communicate with them, obviously you have to do some sort of a summoning or summoning a circle, um, seance, and there's usually some sort of offering that's included. So what kind of offering do you have to bring in to bring him in? Well, him is pretty simple. Like, his colors are like black, red, white, and yellow. And then offerings will be oftentimes like stuff you can leave at the gates of the cemetery or candy, rum, cigars, coffee, um, basically some sort of, of nice food offering to show your respects because that's the other thing. It's like you're you're calling on Papa Lekba to help you connect with the spirits of the cemetery or the ritual and you're you're basically this is this kind of like good etiquette if you're entering into someone's house or something. Mm-hmm. Now the question yeah. is that I would like to address is if the girl Kate or what was her name? Cat Caitlin Cat, if she didn't do this properly, I saw on social media people were saying, oh, because she didn't summon him correctly, he killed her. Is that usually what happens if you don't do a summoning correctly? I don't think so, no. I don't think so. <laughs> Elfie? No. That was so polite. I don't think so, no, okay? It's, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, similar to, like, in, in the... In Pangs or in Witra, people were like, oh my god, if you pronounce it wrong, like, the, I don't know, the gates of hell will suddenly crack open. Or something. Like, <laughs> Jesus! Like that got extreme. Holy crap. Sorry. <laughs> well, like, that's, the thing, that's the thing that annoys me, is that they, they make streams like, if you do this spell incorrectly, everything will go wrong and you'll be cursed. And it's like, more likely, nothing will happen. The only so thing I've like had go you. wrong, I, I have done, there's one time I did, I did, I summoned a circle and I was doing mm-hmm. a spell. It was just, you know, bring like, you know, uh, money to you and like, you know, yeah. like, you know, the, you know, abundance spell type of thing. And, um, I had summoned the circle and I realized I <laughs> left everything I oh. needed in the other room. Okay. Yes. So, and I don't, and I'm like, you know, I'm kind you know, even for an experienced witch, if that's what you want to call me, I was like, well, shit, that was stupid, <laughs> like, you know? So I was like, okay, shut the circle really quick and then come back in. Well, I did it so fast, I reopened the circle again. I went the opposite, the same direction to open it, okay? And then I ran out of the circle, came back in, and I was like, I am so dizzy because <laughs> I ran out of the circle. So, like, but once again... Are you going to burn in the fiery pits of hell? That is something that humans have made up, people, okay? Like, Jesus. I've heard of people do spells where, like, abundance spells or love spells, where it it goes, it kind of goes wonky. It doesn't go, like, horribly wrong, but it, like, doesn't go the way they want. And it's usually how they worded it or something, and just kind of snap back wrong, and they're like, okay, don't do that again. Okay, and, yeah, I have an example for that. I knew somebody, okay. Kat and I used to know somebody who did blood spells. And when I say blood spells, it was their own blood, okay? I didn't, I mean, not me, okay? I don't care what people do. Your, your body, man, you do what you want. I don't care. But, and they, you know, another thing with spell work is you don't want to do 400 spells at once, okay? Because, like, you've got to make sure the first one completes itself, 
before don't, you don't have too many tabs open at once. exactly no that's a perfect way of putting yeah. it Alfie don't you know when you're on your computer and you have like 400 tabs open and your mm -hmm. computer shuts down or it gets slow yeah that's spell work don't do 400 spells at once like do maybe one two max let them play out and then do another one you know like there's a reason you do like a full moon spell and then a new moon spell because you can't have that many going at once. But anyway, this person that we once knew um, was into blood magic and their own blood. Fine, do your thing. I don't care. And uh, they would do a spell every day, two every couple of spells. And I'm just like, and what ended up happening was they had a lot of bad things happen in their life. Yeah. And I think it's because you just can't, you can't do that. You know what I mean? Yeah bunch of that just collided with each other well yeah the universe is like you just gave me like 400 requests here i don't know like i can't like wait you're not being patient at all like, and which do you want first right yeah like literally and then it, it does it gets into a jumbled mess so that's the only sort of thing i've seen with repercussions of doing spell work is like you know don't do well, go ahead oh i was just going to say like there's to me, I think maybe people get confused. Like, there's daily ritual you can do. Mm -hmm. Like, there's daily um, ritual work to recharge yourself, to reset altars, to make offerings stuff that you can do every day that is just kind of cycling through the energy and, and helping keep your practice up and everything. And mm -hmm. then, like you said, there's the doing 400 spells and just overloading yourself in the universe and the universe going what do you want first you right, guys right. well mantras daily you know mm -hmm. manifestations uh what are what are you talking about um meditations like you know mm -hmm. making yeah. lists of things that you like want to accomplish that's not the same thing as like doing a full-blown like and especially blood spells i, I mean i assume blood spells that's work like but that's deep it is that's a lot and that's exhausting and yeah. it, it will backfire. It will backfire. Well, and also, it's like you kind of have to think about because, at least for me personally, when you're doing a ritual work, you're you're tethering out a piece of yourself to do a ritual to to send out something for whatever reason. So if you've got multiple going, that is a lot of your personal energy being put out there with nothing really coming back. So you're you're going to end up just depleting yourself mm -hmm. before anything might come to fruition. Mm -mm. It's so true. And you need to make sure there's some good intent behind it because not everybody believes in the rule of three, which means if you put something bad out there, it'll come back to you times three. I do believe in that rule, but I've also never, I don't, why, I, you know, I've had people put hexes on me and curse me and stuff, especially being on YouTube. Um, and I've known people in my life too that haven't liked me that have done stuff. They've admitted it to me like face to face. Oh, and I'll be like, N well, nothing happened, boo. And they'll be like, yeah, I just wanted to apologize because it came back to me threefold. And I'm like, well, <laughs> it's what you get, you know? But, you know, none of my business. So, yeah, there are rules when it comes to magic. But it's it, are you, it's so Hollywood to be like, oh, yeah, she summoned this Loa and it killed her two mm -hmm. days later. And you're like, oh, God, here we go again. And from the looks of it, it was like a comment or a post or something. And they're like, someone found it, like, oh my god, it was this, it was this is the reason, and everything. It's like, we don't know the reason you seem to be jumping now to a conclusion. Mm-hmm, exactly. Well, well, now, do I, that, okay, I, don't, I guess we're going to jump ahead, it's fine. This girl that summoned him was white, I'm just going to say it. I know that I'm white passing, even though I'm Native American, um, and so I'm not ashamed to say, like, I think race was a factor that was brought into uh, the negotiation that was ongoing on social media over this girl. People mm -hmm. were basically saying that she was white and because she summoned a Haitian Loa, who is of African American culture, um, mm -hmm. he basically was shunning her because she was some stupid white girl. I don't really think race was the problem here, <laughs> to be honest. Like, in my opinion, on the other side, I don't think race is an issue. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think, I think that's a human experience. I think that's an earthling experience. I don't think that she was killed by the Loa because she was white. That, what do you think about it? I, I don't think so, just because there is many different, there, you, voodoo is, is a, a African, religion and everything but there are it also has evolved and changed and depending on what which branch you're talking about there are so many different people and cultures who do 
who uh, who are involved with it. And I think, like, if you look at the photos, you see this this very much um, young white girl that, and they just zeroed in on that of like, oh, she caused trouble because of this. Yep. Mm -hmm. That and it it I think is that the. I can understand where some of the hostility comes from because there has been so much discussion in the occult and Paysum and even in the voodoo culture and stuff mm -hmm. from the looks of it, at least online. I don't know, like in person or anything, because that's not area of mine. But there is this continued talk about appreciation and appropriation. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this is people's knee jerk reaction of, well, here's another. Person culture of yeah oh, yeah i have a perfect cult. example i have a perfect example for it which is there's a thing i don't know if you've seen on social media that's going around um but it's been a thing of uh, i essentially i think it it was kind of started by um the the newer generation that's coming up and um it started on tiktok of people saying that um do not buy or use white sage unless you're native american Oh, okay. Have you? I'm sure you've seen. This is all I, over yeah, TikTok. Yeah, the, the big debate back and forth about. Oh yeah, there it. it's still ongoing, and yeah, um, you know, Cat got on the phone with me the day she saw it, and she was like, "How do you feel about this?" You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, essentially, they're saying like, "Do not ever." And and I've in rebuttal of because I like to play devil's advocate. I have mm -hmm. seen Native American people, not just younger, not the younger generation, get on this train of yeah white people can't use our sage. I have seen Native Americans say that. Um, yeah. I, I, I think I've talked about this before. I asked my grandmother, I asked my spirit guides to get my grandmother involved because I wanted to know her opinion on it because I couldn't see the problem in it. I didn't, I didn't see what, how that was cultural appropriation. For me, other Native Americans or indigenous people can feel that way if that's how they feel. I, I disagree with that. Um, and the message I sort of got from my grandmother was she came to me in a dream and she said, we were oppressed. We were on the trail of tears and we survived. And we did not survive genocide for you to be sitting there fighting over sage. Mm. So that was a really strong statement from my grandmother. And she was like, if someone needs help, we want them to incorporate sage and in, into their, you know, you don't have to be Native American and spiritual and to use it. Um, so I, I highly disagree with that, with cultural appropriation when it comes to spiritualism, because you know, sage has been known for, you know, hundreds of years to remove negative energy and negative spirits. And I don't expect someone to have to follow Native American lineage just to be able to use it. There's another yeah. thing that's online that says like, okay, well, if you're white and you want to use sage, you can use it as long as you buy it from Native American like um, vendors. And you have to get their permission. I don't agree with that either, man. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, support small businesses for sure. But then they were saying, like, yeah, the white sage was stolen from the indigenous lands and the white man was recreating it and then doing agriculture. And, like, and I'm like, where, where did y'all get this from? Like, that could have happened somewhere maybe. But there are literally farms for white sage in California. I've been to those farms. Like, they farm it. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that it should just, you should be like, oh, sage is owned by indigenous and you can't use it unless you're indigenous. I'm, I'm indigenous. And I had people coming at me saying, you're too white to be able to use sage. And I'm like, cause I bleach my hair. I'm still have, I have bloodline. I'm registered with the tribe. Like it shouldn't matter what I look like on the outside. So it's just, that's a, it's the human experience in my opinion of, of earthlings fighting over useless wars. Uh, yeah, and I and I've heard the debate. And I I think part of it was it was debate over whether or not like uh, say white sage was being over harvested if it was going extinct if it extinct because some people were like oh my god it's going extinct it's being over harvested and the other one was the use of the word uh, smudging instead of using uh, the proper word uh, instead of using the word smoke cleansing because it was the idea that smudging is a particular um, form of cleansing and then the, the general... Well, they were basically saying smudging is the spiritualism of the native tribes mm -hmm. and it is true. Yeah. But, like, I'm honest to God, like, if my grandmother were here, she would be like, this is ridiculous. 
Why are we even having this conversation? My family, the, you know, my grandmother escaped poverty because the res is poverty. Like, I mean, to this day, the res is poverty. I still have family on the res that's just poverty. And um, they, you know, unfortunately, um, they have some serious generational trauma that my grandmother used to talk to me about. And it's still being passed on to this day. And the generational trauma is they were forced onto the reservations and um, don't leave because it's not safe. We, we were forced onto the res and don't leave because it's not safe with the outside world and then they're afraid to leave and then then you do get things like this happen that we don't want to share the stage with the white people because they already took everything from us but my grandmother escaped poverty and left because she said she knew she needed to i wouldn't be here if she wouldn't have left the res you know what i mean and she was really ahead of her time and and my family is very much like build a longer table not a wall type of people Mm -hmm. um, meaning, like, if you want to incorporate our religious beliefs and spiritualism, please do. If you have yeah. a demon in your house, please go buy some white sage. Please do. You know? Like, I, I just, it's... And this girl, like, she, you know, Kate, Caitlin, whatever her name, Kate Cat, um, she identified as pagan. She was in, like, a pagan, uh, like, Facebook group and whatnot online. Yeah. She she was a witch and then she got interested in hoodoo and voodoo and started incorporating it. People are saying, "Oh, she's white. She shouldn't have done that." Now, I can't speak for people that are of hoodoo and voodoo because I don't necessarily p call upon their gods, goddesses, deities, loa. But like I do think that if you have some sort of interest in the culture, it's okay to incorporate it. Well, I think it's one of those things where it is that line between it's a knee jerk rate between appropriation and appreciation because it's also that thing where I've seen the over or the overarching extreme where there is one thing to be aware of different cultures and to try to understand learn instead of just like cherry picking stuff. But then people get to the extreme like, well, because you're not from here and not from this culture and not from don't aren't the right type of person, you're not allowed support but don't buy or read or anything but still support which i'm not sure how that's possible well comparing going back to my culture of native american mm -hmm. i was interested in witchcraft at a very young age and my grandmother loved spiritualism and you know she didn't call it witchcraft she called it spiritualism my aunt mm -hmm. was into witches i've talked about that she had witches all over her house you know like I, my other irish side my irish scottish side came from witches that were actually burned at the stake along with my english side and um, as a Native American, I'm not supposed to practice witchcraft. That's a big no-no. And the reason is, is that um, in, in our culture and our family of our homeland and on the reservation, the only people that are allowed to practice magic are the shamans or shamans um, or druids. And those are the medicine man, medicine people. And um, if you did any sort of magic practice, it's looked down upon. So I'm a perfect example of merging two complete sides and that I'm not supposed to merge. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, what using my native and, and I'm not calling myself a shaman like at all. No, no, that's not allowed. Like I would have to be on the res and study under a shaman and they, I'd have to be chosen by the shaman. Um, but you would be you would be shunned on um, on the res if, if you were like openly practicing paganism or witchcraft. But my, my aunt did, too. And, you know, she's more Native than I am. And um, so once again, you're right. Why do I have to be determined just because of my bloodline what I have to practice? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop practicing witchcraft slash paganism just because I'm Native American. I'm going to incorporate both sides. And I, it, it works. And, it, and if it works for you and you understand it and it, it just it clicks, mm -hmm. if it clicks right for you. Well, it's just a shame that it's there's such a line drawn with all of these. Because you're right. It's, it's more of appreciation in my eyes. If someone's taking your culture, hoodoo voodoo, and, and you're, they're so interested in it, they're incorporating it in their daily like practices, mm -hmm. how is that a bad thing? Why, is that, why are they being shunned on for that? Like, that means they, they love your culture. You know, my mom is obsessed with BTS. Like, she's obsessed with South um, South Korean culture. Obsessed. I mean, she eats mm -hmm. the food. She's, like, into it. Like, she <laughs> loves South Korea. Like, she wants to go there. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. once again, why should that be shunned when you're, like, that interested in it? I don't get it. I, I'm not sure either. I mean, it's, it's one of those, like, 
dialogue does need to be talked about because there has unfortunately been times when the, these cultures, and it's because I think it might be like we were going back with Hollywood and voodoo and how it's portrayed is they've been picked over so much and they've been misrepresented and mm -hmm. they've been misused and so when even when there is a possibility of someone wanting to practice it properly there is probably that knee-jerk reaction of like what are you going to do oh i How heard you represent this i was when i was reading through this girl when she died you know like it was a very public thing because she had announced on social media that she like summoned papa legba which by the way i don't really agree with the way she said it because she made it sound like she summoned papa legba and he was just hanging out at her house for days like that doesn't happen okay like he has other things to do okay that, that sounds very much like the the witch tiktok i've, I've seen where people are like i have five deities hanging out <laughs> i'm quite screaming you're like wow that's a lot right. can i meet them like bring them on over you know what i mean like, no it's Apollo, hades door they're all <laughs> i'm screaming oh my god i'm dead because it's true that's how it sounds oh it's, yeah it's so bad but when people were when she died a couple of days later after she had announced that Papa Legba was there mm -hmm. she, there had there were people that were followers or practice or practitioners of hoodoo voodoo that were like she deserved to die because she summoned our Loa without our permission I'm like who do you that, call for the permission also I didn't also, it's like, like no, healthy. Your permission, personally? No, it's. I know. I don't understand. I just don't understand. And first of all, no one. You should never. That is black magic. Saying somebody deserved to die, and that's mm -hmm. gonna come back times three, in my opinion, to you just for saying that. It's like I. I feel like that. I. I think that's also like I said. I think that some of that came out of a nature, the internet, which is just. It's the internet. Don't. <laughs> I think it can be dark. Also, Let's be real. I mean, social media can be dark. Oh yeah, people go dark real fast on it. Like they say stuff where it's like you probably would not say that. I mean, fast. okay. Let's compare for a second, Elfie. Like you're, yeah. you know, we have Shaylee that's now on that we'll talk. We'll chat mm -hmm. about that at the end of the conversation and talk about her. She's the newbie of the group. You know, and I've done YouTube for, what, seven years or whatever. And then I was on, obviously, with uh, Travel Channel. And, and then I was signed to Sci-Fi. But you're, like, the elder of the group, right? Like, <laughs> you're the you're the wise elder of the group. She's, she's the oldest. She's very wise. She's, like, she's the goddess of the group. She's, she's done Paranormal State for how many seasons? Like, you are, like, the, like, we're the ones that worship you. But you've, but you've been doing this for a while, and so have I. And, I mean, it's not easy, is it, being on social media and having your whole life played out in front of millions of people? Oh, God, no. And I remember, like, even at the early times when social media wasn't yet quite a thing, like, MySpace days. If oh my god, were that. you on MySpace? Yes. Yes. Oh my god. I was on that. <laughs> so did you get a lot of people come after you that didn't like you from Paranormal State? Uh, I had a few. I, I don't think it was quite so bad as probably like today it would be, but I did have my fair share of people being negative and like really just horrible comments of like, especially the backhand ones, like, oh you're this, but it'd be better if you did this, this, oh, and this, yeah. and like Oh, thanks. Don't That's read bad. my YouTube comments then, girl. Okay. <laughs> I used to I, be able to manage them. I just let them go anymore. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I learned really early, like, don't read the comments. Mm -hmm. Don't don't react. Because I did react a couple times to comments because I raged out. <laughs> did you? I, yeah, I did that in the I beginning. Did. Yeah. I raged. But then you learn real quick, like, oh, wait, these are just trolls. These yeah. are people who literally hop on, make their... They're smart ass remarks and then they, they flitter off to the next place to be the troll. So it's one of those like just don't That's don't when you do place. shadow work though and you realize when people are so angry enough to like write out a book comment to like tell you mm -hmm. how bad they hate you and how dumb you are is like wow they have some serious like energy inside of them that's like dark and like that's a reflection of themselves. Like it oh, really yeah. is. So much of it's projection and so much of it's like mm -hmm. There was a point where I felt bad because it's like you just spent this amount of time saying this stuff when it's like, don't you have energy to put into something else for yourself instead of just being angry? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've, I've seen the the ugly of it and 
it's one of those where I think that's the I I have to you have to look with like these comments here with cat when um when with with the cat girl reacted. yeah I know um, it was bad I I don't know how much of it is like I think part of it's trolls making their comments and then part of it might be also people react knee jerk reaction of like oh which TikTok or or just media fluff stuff dragging voodoo through the muds more mm -hmm. and making assumptions yeah i agree but it's sad like both sides like i agree like their their belief system who do voodoo shouldn't have been drugged through the mud so bad but i also yeah, agree like you sh even when someone's passed you shouldn't go and be like oh i'm glad you're dead like whoa that is that that's, is black magic ho like whoa like also it's like you also have to think too like the family is also no matter the cause of the death the family is grieving because they lost a daughter and a sister mm -hmm. like it, it's still a human being oh i know but that's what social media is like it's um there it's soulless sometimes oh yeah like it's i so i mean i have like soulless. my instagram's under control like twitter goes off the hook sometimes like i get some people that are just <laughs> ranting and then honestly i'll just like mute them i'm like you know what i want you to watch my stuff i just don't want to see what you have to say back and like sometimes cat will call me and be like this person messaged you on or sent you a tweet and it was horrible and i was like um i can't see it you know why because it's muted i can't see you and it doesn't put me in a bad mood no, it's true, but it, it's sad because it shouldn't be so dark, but it's crazy. Like, it, that's proof of how much struggle is going on on this planet. Yeah. You know I what I mean? Also, I think some of those comments probably were not so much directed at her personally. I could see it possibly just at the press of how they spun it. Like, they take, mm -hmm. they take this one bit and they spin it to, oh my god, this big thing when it probably wasn't. Well, and so that's a perfect tangent to go on to where it's AHS because didn't AHS make him into Papa Ligba was basically the devil and he was taking the souls into hell or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a per that's why, you know, it's like that's not even what this Loa is about. And now now the Loa is in the media again. And they're oh, yeah, like, great. That was 20, 2013 was when Coven came out. And didn't they have to do, like, human sacrifices or something? And, and in reality, to pull in Papa Legba or, like, worship him, you don't have to do any sacrifices. Yeah, it was Marie Laveau, and she had made a deal with him. Basically, she would sacrifice a baby every year to stay immortal. Marie Laveau, that's the voodoo queen. Yeah. I was so... I okay, think that's like, just an excuse to want to sacrifice a baby. Who does that? And where does one get the baby? I don't get it. I have so many. Not that I really want to know the answers, but I have a <laughs> lot of questions. <laughs> where do you get the baby? Who's going to be like, take my baby? Like, what? Is, and what's wrong with you if you do? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you make a post. I need a baby. For <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what is wrong with people? Like, literally, you know what I mean? But like, yeah, I mean, so obviously, so they're saying Marie Laveau did Papa Leg Baron. But really, out of nowhere, everyone's going to start defending Papa Legba. Not that I'm not that, that there's anything wrong with that. But like, they're all offended now because he's in the media all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Like, well, and the thing was, too, is like, I, I really enjoy Kevin the, the whole bit. But like, oh, me too. Oh, my I, God. Marie Laveau, I can't remember the actress name, but she, her playing Marie Laveau was awesome. The visuals was awesome. But then when you when Papa Legba showed up, first of all, when I saw him, it was like, Baron Samadhi? But they're like, Papa Lightbaum. I'm like, no. Right. No, right. but that's, they were confusing the two. You're right. They, they once again muted the two Lois together. And then you see them like, like snorting drugs and just being, basically, they made more out to be like a devil figure. Uh -huh. And I'm like, that's so not right. Oh, you're going to get so much hate. But, but okay, but on the reverse side. Okay, because you know I love playing devil's advocate. It's my freaking favorite thing in the world. <laughs> what would what would happen on TV mm -hmm. if they were to take something and take the image of Jesus and turn him into a drug addict and make him look crazy like that? People would lose oh, people their minds. Oh, yeah. Lose it. 
I mean, like, oh, geez. But I the mean, point I'm is, is that, like, okay, so you can take a Haitian god, we'll just call him a god, you know, it's easier than a Loa. Yeah. And you can turn him into the devil. But, like, if someone took that to Jesus, oh, my God, okay, the South has risen again, it's the end of the world. You know what I mean? Like, literally. I mean, people probably lost their mind when, when you had that movie Dogma come out and you had Buddy Jesus. Mm-hmm. And they had... Uh, with Ben God Affleck? <laughs> yep. I and remember that movie. I lost their collective. <laughs> well, and imagine that wasn't even when, like, social media was a thing. Oh, no. If, if, it, if it came out today, people would just lose it cancel culture cancel but, I'm, I'm so i'm tired of it like i do like you know i've said with cancel culture i get when you're a pedo or you know like you do things you should like you know rapey things yeah cancel but like just eminem leave him alone man you know like well the thing was okay so i get okay so first off like with my heart say coven I would hope that no one would ever take that show and utilize it as education <laughs> or how-tos of any kind. It is strictly entertainment, mm-hmm. ghost stories, and horror. Mm-hmm. It is nothing, there's no level of education. It's cool that they do based off act, some actual people right. and you can pull that part. But it should never be like, this is how do a ritual. I think that's why I like Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. It's not spot on perfect, of course, because it still has to be made for Hollywood. But it was pretty closely accurate to the way you do like a summoning circle. Like, I think that's why I liked it because it was the most realistic version of seeing witchcraft being brought to the media and it not being shunned. I think with that too, is like, even though it was very, like you said, very glamorized and such, it really did showcase more like there has to be rules and balance and a lot of it was a lot of sympathetic magic Mm -hmm. and everything so that was pretty cool and with the coven i i know for sure like okay if you actually had papa legba how he actually is presented pop up he probably wouldn't have been that like people have been like who's this but everyone has always seen Baron Somni in the top hat and mm-hmm. like there's a Baron Somni in a 007 movie mm-hmm. and so he's more recognizable but they're like well just switch the name out no one will notice but everyone notices. <laughs> everyone's like wait you just missing you how did you just mute two Loa together I'm confused yeah, it's, it's, so it it just I feel like I don't know where they were trying to go with that and it's like Why did you make him like a devil figure, like this super evil? When when you had beforehand, you had Marie Laveau actually doing stuff to help her community and heal her community, but then she turns around and sacrifices babies. That I don't know. It just they're like we can't make them too good. We gotta remind people that they're actually evil or something. There was something the other day, I can't remember what I was watching, I think I was watching it with Kat, I think it was on the Gaia app again, but it was some uh, episode that was talking about, like, the term Hollywood, Mm -hmm. is, like, literally means, like, it's something like, something, like, land of spells or something, there's some, like, meaning behind it. And, oh, okay. And um, I can't, don't quote me, I'll have to go back and find this. <laughs> but Kat and I were like, oh my god, it makes sense. But it was basically saying, like, Hollywood. It literally means, like, like we're controlling you through the media of, like, w- the prop- propaganda we're giving you and feeding you. Mm-hmm. Not only, and I'm not, I'm not ragging on it, because obviously I want, I'm a filmmaker, and obviously, like, we want to shoot a series. Like, that's the ultimate goal. But um, we also want to do it right, and we don't want to shame these religions. And, like, there's so much history. Like, you just need to let it speak for itself. Mm. Like, it's cool to watch and understand without making it into a a ha-hoo. You know what I mean? A hoo-ha, whatever. A (laughs) ha-hoo. Dyslexic. (laughs) Hoo-ha. Oh, shit. I I, I think with that, too, it's like... I get that they, you have to kind of glamorize it up, you have to zhuzh it up and, and make it, it a little more bright and spectacular for mm-hmm. TV because it will, won't translate correctly. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there could have been a better way to go about it. Mm-hmm. 
and I don't know if someone just got lazy on the writing or like we will make this extra scary. Or bring in someone who specializes in hoodoo voodoo to like talk yeah, about like, exciting things that could make it like you know spiced up, like you said. Oh yeah, like there there could have been specialists on board that could have made it even better. And I just feel like like did you guys just look? You looked at all the wrong books possibly because like I said at the beginning of the show as it progressed before it got to that. It was pretty cool. Like, mm -hmm. it was very kind of stereotypical on some stuff, but visually it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then that happened, like, it just kind of ruined it for me. You're like, where are we going with this? Yeah. Well, also, you're mixing, like, hoodoo voodoo with witchcraft, which I don't think that would really be done. I think it would be one or the other. You know what I mean? Well, that and the turf war between the two, and it was just that. Um, yeah, you're right. The war that, that no, that's not going to happen. People who practice voodoo don't care what people who practice hoodoo and witchcraft do. There's not going to be a war over it. No. We're, we're too lazy and tired to do that, honestly. But that's what happened in Sabrina, too. They did um, they did a war between, like, the elders and, like, the pagans. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. That was... That was... They made the pagans out to be, like... That was a weird one. I don't even... What, I was like, what is happening <laughs> Jesus. It was like, wait, are you... The pagans were like... Not extreme or they something. were like hippies that were like living in a cult. The pagans were like the hippies and they were like, we don't like the hippies. And I was like, it what? Was, you have it, to... It weird. And then you had like the, the, the coven jumpy, then you had the, the witches jumpy between like Hecate and then Lilith and then it's like, pick a deity. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's like such a like pagan thing to say, Elfie. <laughs> oh, like, Pick oh, one. Any in the one season, they're like, well, I guess we worship Lilith now because she's queen of hell. But then later on, they're like, no, it must be Hecate. It's like, is it basically whoever answers your call? It's like, yep, we're going with that. Well, one. and it was the it was the Church of Satan, and then that changed to what was what was it? Because he, he like. Satan got oh. mad at him or something, and then it changed to something else. I don't even know. And I was like, what's going on? This well, sounds like Hollywood. It's all over the place here. Well, it was first Church of Night, and they were they worshipped Satan. And they found out Satan was a jerk, and that they, they were like, nope. And <laughs> Satan's a jerk. <laughs> ah, I'm screaming. I can't. Whoa, I'm crying again. No. Whoa. Lilith is now queen of hell. She took over and everything. So they're like, okay, I guess we worship Lilith now because she's in charge of hell. Oh, that's right. It was, But there was something in between. There was something in between that that, like, Faustus changed it to. Oh, that's right, because he was kind of trying to bring it back old school or something. He's like, I want to bring it back to the way it used to be. Yeah, I can't remember. Or I guess witches were suborn and the, the <sighs> wiz sort of wizards were in charge or something. That's a mood. He was, he was having, like, a midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Elfie, you say the one-liners, I swear to God. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> Kat says, Elfie's amazing. She is. Uh -huh. Okay, let's, t I want to talk about Kat, though, at the end, not our cat. Yeah. The death of Caitlin Rustin. She died on April 19th of 2020. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, she, it was all over the media um, that her death happened. Virginia teen yeah. dies. She was 19 years old. Um, two days after summoning ancient ancient uh, Asian voodoo deity Papa Legba, ah, uh, so okay, I tried to find her like mm -hmm. obituary. I tried to find her, um, I tried to find information on her death. Like if there was like an autopsy report, couldn't find that. Um, she was a single parent, which is really sad because like someday her 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 child is gonna Google her name. And yeah. it's going to pop up that she died from this Haitian v deity. Can you imagine that? Your child, you've, you're you dead and gone, and your kid has to grow up and Google that you, you were doing black magic or something, and you died because some creepy monster came and got... Uh, it's just horrible. It's just horrible. Um, anyway, I don't know. Like, Okay, she was 19 years old. She was obviously young. She did say she was a practicing pagan. She said she was practicing magic. Mm -hmm. Let's just start here and say, do I think that she was murdered by Papa Legba? No, okay? I don't. I think that he's busy. I think he has a lot of other things to do besides kill some white girl that was 19. Like, I mean, what do you think? 
Well, they, in the one of the posts were talking about how she supposedly was doing this to curse her girlfriend. I think and... it was, was it her girlfriend or was it her boyfriend's new girlfriend or something like that? No, I think, I think it was her girlfriend or her girlfriend and everything and there was a Papa doll with some hair. And oh, like, that's oh, right. She was trying to hex her ex. That's a mood. Welcome yeah, to the and, club, ho. And it was just one of those people were trying to make connections and everything and Oh yeah, there's the the post and everything. Yeah, I'm seeing it. It says that he, she tried to hex her ex, and that because mm -hmm. Papa Legba got mad at her, he killed her. Okay, first of all, we don't know her history of her health. Okay, mm -hmm. second of all, it says that she may have died from an anxiety attack. There's other things that said something she like drowned in a bathtub. Oh yeah. come on, this is, like this isn't even a bad deity in my opinion. Do you think it is? Well, I think also you have to think too. Like this, this was at the early stages of 2020, early stages of the pandemic. She had just had a baby who was like five months old. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There could have been underlying health concerns from either just having a baby or something. Postpartum else. is a thing for sure. Yeah, I mean, like the the obituary is very simple, and so it's like obviously something happened that the family didn't want to talk about. And well, yeah, the family never like came thought, forward and said anything about this. No. Like, I think they honestly just wanted to leave it be. There was uh, a, a GoFundMe that was created by someone in the family? I want to say maybe? Well, this is literally what the obituary said. It's so short I can read it. Caitlin Ann K uh, or Kat Rustin, 19, bright spirit who inspired others to forge on during challenging times. Caitlin Ann Kat Rustin was 19 of Virginia Beach, passed away unexpectedly said Sunday, April 19, 2020, at her mother's home. Caitlin was born November uh, 29th of 2000. She was raised in Virginia Beach and attended uh, Plaza Middle and Green Run High School. Caitlin was a proud new mom and adored her new baby, Aaliyah. She was always the bright spirit of any gathering, and her resilience was to keep going in challenging times inspired by many of her family and friends. Caitlin will always be deeply loved and very missed by all. Nothing on what happened. Honestly, yeah, there was a GoFundMe page on April 23rd that was uh, brought up. It was a um, campaign titled For Aaliyah, Her Daughter in Memory of Caitlin Rustin. Um, as of May 1st, 2020, the campaign exceeded its goal of $20,000, or I'm sorry, $2,000. Um, then it was sitting at over 9200 on that day. Then they kept upping the amount because, obviously, the media took the story and ran, felt bad, and started donating. I hope that yeah. the kid got it. I highly doubt the kid got it. Probably went for, like, funeral expenses. Um, it says, campaign description explained of the goal of providing a trust fund for Aaliyah. Um, you know, and I hate to say this, but this is what happened when Christian died. I talk about this in my book. Christian um, was uh, was declared a suicide when he died in 2015. He came to me in a dream and told me he was murdered. He said that he was involved with some bad people and it was a drug deal sort of gone bad. And his girlfriend at the time set up a GoFundMe page. <clears throat> we have a huge circle of friends in Colorado and everybody donated, mainly because they needed the money for his uh, you know, cremation, funeral, burial expenses. And it exceeded $6,000 within a couple of days. It ended up getting up to like $12,000. And the girlfriend withdrew the money and never paid for Christian's burial. Mm -hmm. She went and took the money and spent it on drugs. And Christian's brother had to step forward, who's in the military, and paid full for his brother's cremation and burial costs. Um, oh. So, I mean, I hate to say this, but this happens a lot. And it's sad because there's people out there that really need it, mm -hmm. like actually need it. And they're going to take the money for what it's supposed to be for versus mm -hmm. people that just abuse the system. And I hate to say it that it does happen because it happened to Christian, too. Yeah, it happens too often. Like, there's so many times when there's a tragedy and you will mm -hmm. see GoFundMe. And that's when you definitely have to fact check, make sure, is this GoFundMe actually going to go to where you're hoping or is it just someone doing a money grab mm -hmm. another thing that um i wanted to kind of chat about is i have a couple of her tweets that she was talking about before she ended up dying so um apparently they they were active if you search cat rustin um k-a-t 
Rustin, R-E-S-T-I-N. They are there, or they were. I haven't seen them. This is a, a page that actually took screenshots. But um, she obviously talks about doing occult practices. Um, she talks about um, being publicly Wiccan. Um, she says, let people live and have their own religion. If someone is into something different, accept that. Stop saying, no one, you uh, no, you come from God. Um, don't use that against people for their religion. Um, she also said that, uh, she talked publicly about summoning Papa Legba. She talked publicly about using voodoo dolls or doll babies, um, and she would use hair for them. So I, I think that was the part that was probably looked down upon in the Haitian hoodoo voodoo communities. Um, because, yeah. you know, and I will say that this is what I will say. I don't, I've never done dark spell work. Um, and I'm not expecting Elfie to respond because if she has, that's her business. That's not publicly that it needs to be talked about by anybody. It is up to the practitioner to ever, you know, admit that or deny it. But I will say that spiritual practices like witchcraft are very private practices. And I don't think they should be publicized most of the time. Mm-hmm. Now, if we're like the four of us, Elfie, myself, Kat, and Shaylee are going into a location doing a... Um, summoning, you know, like doing, we're saying, we're doing a seance. That's fun to record. Those are pretty innocent, you know, or giving like, Elfie loves to give offerings. You know, I can't wait to have Elfie on set because she's so knowledgeable on all this stuff. But it's a whole nother thing, like posting on social media, like, oh, I made a voodoo doll using my ex-girlfriend's hair. Yeah, that's a problem. And even if you're doing that, it should probably be done privately. Well, yeah, yeah, for me personally, that's, I've always, okay, so I will post, like, I'm very, like, I, I, I think I've maybe post a picture of my altar, like, twice ever, mm-hmm. um, because, like I said, there's a difference between, like, if I'm out doing a public, uh, ritual or public event, or even if we're, like, investigating and we're doing some sort of ritual or offering, that's in the public space for to me so that's totally fine for filming Mm -hmm. when it comes to my own personal like ritual work or spell work i keep that very private Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. i at least feel like if you're doing spell work you don't want any kind of interference Mm -mm. i feel like if you're going to post a picture of like here's my spell i'm about to do well but it's especially someone interfering especially yes absolutely you know even Kat and I have done spell work together and that's fun it's Mm -hmm. fun when you have like your little coven and you're doing it together especially when it's like um abundance and like money spells like those are fun that makes Mm -hmm. you feel like you're like you know the universe is listening to your little coven or whatever but it's a whole nother thing when and I like I said I've never practiced dark magic but I sure as hell when if I was I wouldn't be posting it on social media I don't think, you know, in my opinion, like you are, you're, it's interference and social media words are spells. Words are spells. Even if you're writing a, a sentence or two about the voodoo doll on social media, words are spells. And now people are coming in and now it's involving other people. And you're right. It's getting interference. And who knows what kind of backlash you could get back for that. Also, like if you're, if you're doing baneful magic, you don't really want to post that publicly because like the person you're probably doing baneful towards i will see right that. yeah so like, well, that's what i mean I, by the way i'm doing this spell on you i know and i fine wow. like you know she's gone god rest her soul wherever she's at i hope to god she's like safe away from papa legba and all these people that were harassing her online but like i don't i why she would post a photo of her voodoo doll from her ex makes no sense to me that tells me that she was screaming for attention and that maybe she was struggling with some mental health too. Because mm-hmm. if you, it, it, you know, you post things wanting people to see them, obviously. Yeah. And, and so I just, you know, and who knows, you know, she was trying to hex her ex-girlfriend. That's why people are like, good, she should have died from it. Oh, come on. Nobody deserves to die. No, do I think she should be hexing her ex? Yeah, probably not. Like, I think you just need to, that girl, you need some soul searching. If you're at the point where you're hexing your ex, like, you need to do some self-love and look inside first before you start putting, like, bad juju onto others. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, also, I have to remember, like, she was 19 years old. And she was still, like... A baby. Just out of her teens. Mm-hmm. And so she was still probably very, also, early in her path work. And everyone 
did the ridiculous stuff when you first started magic and when you made mistakes like unfortunately a lot of times now a lot of it's on public how many Social mistakes media. did you make when it didn't even involve magic i mean i was yeah. an idiot thank god social yeah, media no, okay. wasn't around when i was in my early t like i mean there was like you know myspace and facebook i think myspace became a big thing when i was like 19 i was on myspace mm -hmm. but oh my god Oh my god, I don't even want to know what this girl would have posted, okay? Thank god, because now I have a brain and I know, like, mm, that's not a good idea to post well, that. I can only imagine what it would have been like if if I had, like, Tumblr or TikTok or oh. social news at my teen years or something. Different. Haven't you seen I some of the TikToks where they're, like, trauma bonding and they're, like, telling these, like, traumatic stories and you're like, girl, just go to therapy, boo. Like, you don't need to post it for millions of people to see, you know what I mean? Woo! We've all it's, got therapy. And I, th I think the problem is it's like so many of these early, like these people who are just new on their path, this is the way they know how to socialize or how to post it. Like, it just makes sense. And, and in a pandemic. We're seeing, we're seeing the, 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 the mistakes and the learning curve of what everyone else who is older has already made. We just were lucked out. We didn't have the social media to publicly make ourselves look like like fools. Sometimes. Oh my God, thank God. I'm just really grateful for my <laughs> age right now. But with that being said too, though, if you think about things like making mistakes or whatever and like mm -hmm. social media, we oh, tying that into cancel culture, which is why I hate cancel culture so much, once again, yeah, if you're a rapist, bye. If you do, if you're a pedo, bye. Like, yeah, absolutely. But like, the things with cancel culture is like just cancel everybody that does bad things. Understand, like, we've all fucked up. We've all made mistakes at some point. All of us have. Oh my god, haven't you ever been there laying at night and you're like trying to sleep and you get anxiety and you're looking up the ceiling and you're like, do you remember when I was 13 and I said that stupid thing to my boyfriend? Oh, I'm so embarrassed by that. Like, you literally, you make mistakes. Like, that's how we grow. And I feel like society has shamed us into learning that mistakes are cancellations. Like, no, everybody messes up. Nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, but you shouldn't be canceled for it just because you made a mistake. And I think, unfortunately, it's that, that I think it's that joy sometimes. Like, because there's, there's the difference, I think, between, like, when you're playing someone blast when someone's like done really bad thing it's like no really people need to know you can't bury this mm -hmm. and then there's this the malicious joy of dogpiling on someone for something that might have happened like 12 years ago that they have probably already addressed and apologized for but yet you dug it up and like now we must cancel you for this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, I know. Have we not moved on? <laughs> I know. It's hard. It's really hard. And once again, people that have done things that shouldn't be forgiven, yeah, I agree with, you mm -hmm. know, you know, Harvey Weinstein is right where he should be. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, it just, I, I can't wait for this younger generation to grow up and look back and be like, oh, yeah, I made mistakes too. Whoops. I made it. But you don't know that till you have experience and age. The internet's forever. Oh, no. Like, it's permanent. Oh, and somebody also downloaded that video and reposted it 20 times. So even if you delete it, it's still out there forever. If, if the Kardashians can't give, get photos taken off the internet, it is forever for everyone. <laughs> oh, it's forever. It's forever. What a fun stream. So the last thing I kind of want to touch base on is Shaylee. So Ooh. I announced Shaylee last week, so um, I kind of want to talk about Shaylee a little bit because I had a lot of people asking me questions if you don't follow me on social media. Uh, last week, early last week, I announced that we have added a fourth member to Ghost Girl Diaries, a fourth and final member to Ghost Girl Diaries. Um, yes, we are planning on hitting the road soon and filming, and um, we're excited for it. Um, and Shaylee is number four. So... Why number four? Why four of us? Well, you know, at one time we had Chanel and Brittany involved, and um, obviously Elfie's kind of coming. And Elfie's kind of our, like, edgy dark witch, you know? She's kind of, she's our knowledgeable, edgy uh, book witch, you know? Um, Kat's obviously our earthy witch. I'm kind of like the tribal spiritual witch on, on the side of, uh, of the witch leader, I guess, supreme being here. And then we needed somebody else. I wanted another persona, and I couldn't figure out what I wanted. And um, I was looking, you know, I had a lot of people apply uh, to be a part of us. And, and the problem is, is that 
uh, you know, we're going to be going to some scary places potentially in the future. And I want to make sure there's somebody out there that can handle that. And um, a lot of the people that I would interview, I would say, can you handle being in the dark alone? I know that sounds like a very simple question. And most of the time they said no. <laughs> most of the time. Elfie's like, great, that does a lot of help. You know what I mean? Like, apply for a paranormal show. Can you be in the dark alone? No? Okay, well, this probably isn't going to work. You know what I mean? And <laughs> it's true. That resonates quite a lot right there. I feel like you should have thought that through just a little bit before you applied. You know what I mean? Um, so, um, so anyway, I, I had done a lot of interviews um, over the past, you know, months, literally months of interviews. And... Um, I met Shaylee a couple of years ago. Shaylee uh, used to work at the Haunted Museum in Las Vegas, and she was my tour guide a couple of times, and she was obviously a fan of Ghost Girl Diaries. And um, we've stayed friends. She doesn't work at the... I think she stopped working at the museum about a year ago or a couple of years ago. I can't remember. Anyway, um, she, uh, she and I stayed friends, and um, she has her own little following. She does makeup. She's amazing. She's younger. She's the baby of the group. She's youngest of all of us. And uh, I messaged her one day, because we, we obviously stay in touch, and I said, hey, you know, this is a really random thing, but I said, I'm looking to bring someone in, um, you know, as a fourth member, and you kind of fit the criteria. So I want to bring Shaylee uh, to my house. Obviously, this is the studio and have her in for like a, a podcast chat so you guys can get to know her. Um, but the, the gist of her background is she did have a lot of paranormal experiences as a kid. I'm going to let her share some of those. And um, she worked at the museum for I think it was over a year, maybe two years. And uh, she, <laughs> I'm laughing because this girl, like, she, she doesn't have a lot of experience investigating, okay? Like, and what I mean is, like, using equipment, okay? She's currently being trained by Kat and I on film, so she's learning film right now with us. She's in what Kat calls is Crystal's Film School at the moment um, mm -hmm. to prepare her for set. But um, she used to walk and wander the haunted museum alone for hours. Ooh. That just sounds cool right there. Like, she's guts. Like, she's... If you want to hang out at a spooky place, I've hung out in the museum. By <laughs> herself. <laughs> yeah, and I would be like, so wait, you didn't, like, investigate? She's like, well, no, like, you know, he, Zach has equipment there, but, like, we don't really use it, you know? But she's like, I, I want to, like, get to know these energies by, like, hanging mm -hmm. out in the different rooms and, like, feeling their energy. She'd wander there and go That's sit in the Dybbuk box room by herself. That's awesome. This girl is, like, tough as nails. I was like, damn, I don't even know if I would do that. Like, shit, you know? <laughs> um, I so, like the idea that like, she just wanted to, like, soak up the energy or get the feeling, like, not get distracted by stuff. Just, like, be in the moment of it. Yeah, she's like, I would purposely go to work early mm -hmm. so that I could wander the halls. Is that crazy? Like, what? That's so cool. <laughs> and then I would purposely stay after and I'd wander the museum. So like this girl with guts, like she's wow. got guts. So um, I love her to death. She's very sweet. She's she's like our baby. She's the innocent one. We're definitely shielding her from the outside world and the harm that Elfie and I have experienced. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll, we'll help. Yeah, we've got it. Don't worry, Shaylee. No, so she's very sweet. She's, uh, she's a Leo, so she brings in a little bit of fire to the crew. Um, you're, are you you're a Leo or are you a Virgo? I'm a on the cusp. I'm a Leo Virgo. Oh, well, you're a Leo Virgo. Okay, and uh, and I'm the Earth sign that keeps us grounded. Cats, <laughs> the Aries that's floating above us in the fire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like nobody ever knows where Cats at. Um, her makeup work is beautiful. Like, Shaylee. Ever, yeah, her her just her artistic skills with just playing around with makeup and just. I loved that too. She was on the girly side. She likes clothes. She likes makeup. Um, mm -hmm. She's very grounded, though. I love how grounded she is. She's all about learning, and so so her sort of um, character involved with Ghost Girl Diaries is t for her to be authentic, which is 
she's new to this journey and you guys get to be on the journey with her which i love because i know i have a lot of fans out there for years that um have wanted to do paranormal but they've never like found the group or had the guts to do it and now you get to be on this journey with shaylee where she's she's the newbie but she's a, like very enthusiastic like you guys it's funny because her and i were having a chat the other day and she was talking and she's like you know when when we're like you know going out to film like what kind of locations are you looking into like you know are, are like asylums like and I looked at her and I said, Shaylee, I don't think I can find a darker place than the museum. <laughs> <laughs> like, you've been, you worked in the museum for like two years, boo. And I don't think I can take you anywhere worse than that. So, you know, I think you're going to be fine. You know what I mean? So I, I'm really excited. What do you think of Shaylee so far? I think she's awesome. Like, it, I've only been able to chat with her here and there. And, like... Like I said, her makeup's amazing. She's she's very enthusiastic. It seems to be really just want to learn and very eager to learn. Mm -hmm. That's why I love and just like yeah, let's just do it. I met so her. I totally like I I at least so far I see that she has I have no problem with the idea of like her going like we going into a place and it's like okay now we have to go to a super dark place. She'd be like. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty much. She's like, be just cool with it. Like, that, sure, whatever. Yeah, well, that's why I told her. I was like, Chaley, I don't think I can literally, like, you. the Dybbuk box is in there. Like, the Devil's Rocking Chair is in there. Like, there's a severed head now that's in there. <laughs> I don't think I can take you somewhere worse than that. And she was like, yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. I'm like, yeah, I'm right. Like, <laughs> and you were, like, alone wandering. Like, you know what I mean? So... Um, yeah, she's very great. I met her last week and I, I had to hand deliver her a film book and we were, we were chatting for a few minutes and she was like, I was, you know, explaining to her, I want her to read the whole book, but like, I want you to read a couple of, of chapters and then take away and then come back and then, you know, like don't, and she's like, no, I'm going to go home and read it all. And I was like, no, no, <laughs> she's just very excited. She's very excited to be on this journey, and I'm, I'm excited. I love having that she's in Vegas, knowing that when we start getting ready to travel and stuff, that I'll have her to be able to help me prep equipment. And so, yeah, it's it's great. It's really even though Kat's going to be moving out at some point, and uh, before we before we're traveling, I think we're all going to go on vacation, right, Elfie? We don't know what we're doing yet. <laughs> So far, the only thing we've confirmed is maybe going to a couple of shows in Vegas, and that's about it. It's yeah, like, yeah, I would like to go to the beach, but forever, yeah, it? why don't we do like Vegas for a few days and then drive up to like Lake Tahoe before we hit the road? I think that'd be fun. Oh, I've never been up to Lake Tahoe. Oh, it's gorgeous. Clear water. Oh, clear what? Crystal clear water. It's gorgeous, at least on the south side. But yeah. So, I mean, we can do Cali, but just, I don't know, Cali's a mess right now, you know? It's a mess right now. I don't know if I'm ready to go to Cali right now. Like, I need the pandemic to end first. Oh, man. Well, that um, concludes today's podcast, guys. So, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will have this uploaded tomorrow, uh, possibly tonight, whenever it downloads. And uh, what are we doing next week with Kat? Do you know what we're doing next week with Kat? I can't even remember. Um, Google Sheets, let's go see. I should have this pulled up before each time, but I'm just really, I'm really irresponsible. What are we doing next week, Kat? Do you know? Kat's like, I have no idea. Oh, I just went into the wrong. Oh, Atlantis. Ooh, that'll yeah, be. Yeah, you gotta be doing Atlantis May seventh. Oh, we have some tea on Atlantis, and then my birthday is May tenth. Cool. That was my chosen chat because of my birthday on a quarantine That's again. Awesome. Yeah, I love I Atlantis. Oh yeah, we wa I watched a really good documentary. I can't wait to share what I saw about that because I'm just I definitely think that was a past life for me for sure. I was definitely like a mermaid or something. I don't know. Ah, <sighs> this life I was That's like. Actually, that works perfectly because it's the whole mermaid month and everything. <laughs> Elfie, no, literally, oh my God, jeez, Elfie's one-liners. No. Look, look up the month. Uh, it is a artistic month of mermaid, and people will try to do, I think, almost every day a mermaid theme. I thought it was like May the Fourth be with you. I thought it was like very, 
you know, I wish we'd go to Disneyland. We could go to Disneyland for vacation, but they're only letting locals in right now, so we can't do that. I just feel like I need to be by water for the vacation. You know what I'm saying? Yes. No, I understand. Like, I, I've been wide. I have never been a huge beach person, but suddenly it's like last year I wanted to be by a beach. I wanted to see, like, ocean. It's because we're freaking in quarantine still. <laughs> Literally. Like, I need a large body of water. Ooh, well, we could go to Carmel. We could, we could go to Carmel. That's be- That has whale watching and dolphin watching. That'd be fun. We could do that. That'd be fun. It's not too far. That would be cool. I like how we're planning our vacation on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for being involved in our plans. Um, <laughs> Where do you want to go? I don't know. What are you feeling like? <laughs> oh, man. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you follow us on social media. Also, Kat and I are going to start up the TikTok for Ghost Girl Diaries in the next probably three or four days. So if you're not following us yet on TikTok, make sure you find us at Ghost Girl Diaries because we're going to start that up. I'm excited. We're going to do like, we have, a, we have a lot of ideas, you know, ideas for Are everything. you going to do the TikTok dances? No, absolutely not. <laughs> and, you know, here's why. I was a cheerleader in high school. And so any dance that I do is going to turn out, I'm going to look like a cheerleader. I'm going to be like, rah, rah. And so I'm, no, hmm, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I don't get the I don't get the TikTok dances to be honest with you, but you know what? Uh, Whatever I mean, floats your boat. Like I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I just I'm not into it. Like I just I don't know. I don't do the hair flip thing and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Thank you guys, Elfie. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. You as well. Have, Hopefully you feel better and everything, and <laughs> no more damage. You know what? We're just not going to talk about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> no, I do have I do have a minor outpatient surgery next Thursday, and then I have another one on the following Thursday. Um, because we're going to be filming, and I've got to get this done. And I can't have, you know, a torn a torn ligament in my foot. Okay, I don't have time for this. I mean, we can wheelie around and everything. Would fine. you? We would you mind? Like, if we got one of those like child red wagons, would you pull me in it? Oh, yeah, we'll make this work. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the, I'm just sitting in the bucket, like, mm, on Twitter. <laughs> you and Kat are, like, taking turns pulling me. Hey, thanks. Oh, my God. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for... Back from the dead.